morning. Good morning. You're welcome to church. Uh, for those that of us, for those of us that are watching online, uh, good morning as well. Welcome to church online. Uh, so our new outline. We're starting a new outline. Uh, those are not ready yet, uh, but if you're on the church WhatsApp group, you should be getting the outline for this morning. Um, that will be shared here shortly. So just go in the church WhatsApp group, um, you know, to get the outline for today. And then once the manual is ready, we will obviously get those out um, to every single person. Amen. So today we're looking at, um, obviously from the new outline, the title is uh, Saved for a Purpose. Saved for a Purpose. Saved for a Purpose. Saved for a Purpose. Um, obviously, being purposeful, I think it's something a lot of us are very, um, very curious about, very passionate about. In fact, um, you know, in my generation today, at least I can, you know, I have line of sight to that, to my generation where, you know, if something isn't quite feeling purposeful, um, regardless if you're a believer or not, you don't want to be part of it. It's one of the reasons why folks in my generation they would quit their corporate jobs that's paying them a ton of money because, again, they don't feel like, you know, it's driving any purpose. They don't feel like it's, you know, it's leading to anything significant in their lives. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. So, again, you know, it's the... Also, the reason why, um, again, in my generations, we're very particular about what is the social responsibility of a particular company in, in the community we find ourselves in, in my state, in my city. Um, regardless if you agree with those responsibilities or those social responsibilities is a different topic. But for example, um, does a particular company have women on their board? Do they have women in their senior executive roles? Do they have African Americans? For some people, that's a mission that is worth fighting for. And they connect very much so with those things. And if they don't feel like the organization they are part of is driving towards that mission, then for them, maybe this work or this relationship isn't purposeful. Amen? Let me rephrase that. The reason why I want to be part of this organization, the reason why I want to be part of this church, the reason why I want to be part of this group is because I want to achieve X, Y, Z. In this case, this morning, it is saved for a purpose. The reason why I am saved is for X, Y, Z. It's for this and this and that and this and that. That's the reason why I'm saved. So this teaching this morning is really just to remind us that our salvation isn't just to make us feel good. Right? Our salvation isn't what? Isn't just to make us feel good or feel better about who we are. That's great, right? Because the moment we are a new creature, the Bible says all things are passed away, all things are become new. And we all know how we get excited with anything new. We get really excited, like, wow, I found something that I did not have before. So that comes with being saved. But beyond that, what the Bible is going to help us understand this morning is beyond being excited about the newness of salvation, there is a purpose. Repeat that to yourself. Beyond the excitement of being saved, 
there is a purpose. Say that to yourself. If you're online, say that at home. Share that with someone in the comment section as well. Beyond the excitement of being saved, there is what? There is a purpose. There is a purpose. There's a reason why I am saved. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 16 from verse 15 to 18. We'll read our lesson text. And then we'll also look at, you know, our memory verse today. I'll repeat that again. Beyond the excitement of being saved, there is a purpose. Beyond the excitement of being saved, there is a purpose. And I pray that the Lord will expand that purpose in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Uh, six, sorry, Mark chapter 16. We'll look at from verse 15 to 18. I'll be reading the NIV version. He said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. That's it. Whoever does what? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be what? Condemned. And these signs would accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with your hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Amen. And throughout the scriptures, right, we can attest to an evidence of all of these things. Picking up snakes, speaking in new tongues, right? You know, casting out demons. These are all evidence. But what we want to focus on this morning again is the purpose of salvation. Why am I saved? Before we go further, there's only two outline, which is really short. So we'll try to go through the two outline. Hopefully we split them about seven minutes apiece so we can finish on time. Um, let's look at our memory verse, Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. And we'll read it together. Let's go. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things... Showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, and incorruptibility. Titus 2, 7. I'm going to read that first part. It says, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of what? Of good works. So that's the number one right there. For me as a believer, one of the reasons why I am saved is I need to show a pattern of good works. I have been charged, maybe, maybe that's 1B, but the number 1A is what we read in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It says, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. All of us, we already have that assignment day one. Meaning when I'm saved, I'm supposed to Preach this gospel. Again, going back to that statement we made in the beginning. Being saved, it's beyond the excitement of something new. It's for a purpose. So number one thing is, by the time I'm saved, by the time you're saved, I need to be intentional about spreading the gospel. One of the reasons why I should be intentional and excited about sharing the gospel is because I have seen the light. I have seen the impact of Jesus Christ in my life. I have seen the perspective that it gives me in my life. The things that I was scared about, I'm no longer scared of them. The things I didn't have understanding about, I now have some understanding about them. The places that I wasn't looking, the new frontiers, the new horizons that I wasn't aware of before, 
being saved allows me to see those things. Those are just some of the benefits that I'm enjoying as a believer. The hopelessness in my life has turned to hopefulness. The sense of loss, and I have a sense of direction. Even though I may not have a dollar, I feel very rich. Not even just feeling, I know I am very rich. So again, with this knowledge of being a believer, I will be selfish not to step out, to tell somebody, Jesus loves you. Jesus is the only way. And then we're writing our memory verse, it says in Titus chapter 2 verse 7, it says, In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. Meaning once I am now saved, I am excited because there's an excitement with something new. That's fine. But don't dwell on it too much. The purpose to which you're saved is to save other people. Not you saving other people, but it's to attempt, it's to lean in to other people's lives and say, hey, my brother, my sister, this is the good news. And here's why it's the good news. I used to be hopeless, but now I'm hopeful. I didn't have this, but now I do. But most importantly, I used to thirst, now I thirst no more, literally. Amen. <laughs> I pray that the Lord again will expand it in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. So in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. So we are saved to bear fruits. That's outline number one. We are saved to do what? To bear fruits. Let's open our Bibles really quickly to John chapter 15. <clears throat> John chapter 15. We'll read verse 16. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you, so that you might go and do what? And bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. God isn't interested in you just being saved, and that's it. No. He wants you to bear fruit, and fruits that will do what? That would last. Not only are you, just, are you going to get saved, not only are you going to bear fruits, that's great, but then the fruit has to last, meaning they abide, which is the outline number two. And I think some of the challenges that we sometimes face and sometimes discourages us is when we feel like, ah, I'm trying to lean in to witness the gospel and I don't feel like it's working and it's somewhat discouraging. My charge to us on that is, it's not our job to save anybody, but it's our job to share the word of God. It's our job, as we read in Titus 2.7, that we must show a pattern of good works in the body of Christ. Meaning, if I am living an exemplary life, if I am showing a pattern of good works, if I am sowing the seed that's in the word of God, I know what the word of God says in John 15, 16. It says, you did not choose me, but what? I chose you and I appointed you. Meaning, all things being equal, God, the Spirit of God, will convict those hearts. That we've sown this seed, they've seen examples in us showing good works. They will be convicted because we're believing on their behalf. We're interceding on their behalf. But we have responsibilities, and that's the purpose. After our salvation, we have a responsibility, which is our purpose. We have to show good works in the body of Christ. We have to make sure that we're sowing the seeds, 
and then believe that those seeds would abide. Amen. Any thoughts, questions, really quickly on that outline one, which is we are to bear fruits. Again, if you're just joining us, the outline is on the WhatsApp group of the workers of the church. We can pick up the outline there. Uh, once we get the physical copies of the outline, we'll have them available to everybody. So saved to bear fruit, saved for a purpose. I am saved so I can bear fruit. Once I'm saved, I'm to show a pattern of good works. Can we have a few contribution on what an example of good works is or what are examples of good works? You can contribute online as well if you're watching at home. You can share in the comment section. Example of good works, anybody? Yes, ma'am. Example of good work is that when we are being saved, we should also go out and evangelize and win and bring people into the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you, ma. Anybody else? Example of good works? Okay, yes, ma. Would also be um, using what you have to bring people to Christ. Those that don't have, you show love. Those that don't have to eat, you give to them. Mm. The less privileged, you help them out. It's also showing a good work. Excellent. Thank you for that. That is very helpful. That is also an example of showing good works. And talking about giving people food to eat, I know one of the things that's dear on our pastor's mind is to eventually establish a food pantry. If that's something that you are passionate about, um, there's going to be some work that needs to be done around that. Um, you know, there may be some legal things we may need to understand with the city, with our county, with the state of Ohio. There will be obviously logistics involved in terms of getting the food items. There will be some, you know, messaging out to the public, you know, to eventually be able to, and obviously scheduling as well, what works for you, what works uh, for you in putting all that stuff together. If that's something you're still very actively interested in, uh, please see my wife um, or talk to pastor directly, either way. But I know it's something that is very, very dear to pastor's uh, heart uh, for us as a church. Uh, it's one of the ways for us to do good works. Again, we have the word of God to show us the things that we ought to be doing, some of which were mentioned here this morning. What are those causes? What are those things? What are those good works that I need to be doing to show who Christ really is? That the more I do it, I see Christ even more. I give an example of, you know, taxes. The more you talk to people, and even I'm sure in, you know, if you're a lawyer, you talk to people going through challenges. If you're a doctor, you talk to people going through challenges. If you're a tax accountant, you go talk to people going through challenges. In those individual challenges, you see how massive God is. Like, wow, some things that you took for granted. Amen. Yeah. So, meaning, in the process of us doing that good work, God is also blessing us and helping us to realize his grandeur, how massive, how gracious, how dope, how awesome he is. So it's not just one way, it's two ways. You're being a blessing in people's lives through good works to help them to be saved. And you, in return, are getting blessed. Why not? Who's up for that? Anybody? Anybody's up for that? That's a great deal. Right? So... 
My charge to us, there are opportunities within our own local assembly to do good works. If you have questions about that, if you aren't sure, talk to the pastor, talk to myself. Um, there are those opportunities. But the opportunities does not end within this four wall of the local church, local assembly. There are millions of opportunities for us to bear fruits, which is outside of these walls. There are millions of opportunities for us to be exemplary in good works so that we can bear fruits, so that God can use it as a vehicle to bear fruits. And also the traditional way that Jesus charged his disciples, which is go out there and disciple all nations, every single person. Talk to every single person about the good news, that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. Amen. That once you come in Christ, all things are passed away. All things are now new. Hopelessness is gone. Dejection is gone. Loss is gone. But for you to teach about those things and speak about them convincingly is because you've also experienced the mightiness of God in your life. Amen. Any questions, thoughts as we round up? Again, if this is something you're, you know, there is obviously a lot more scriptures in the outline. Uh, once the outline, the book outline is out, um, we will share with the church. Last comments, questions, thoughts on bearing fruits, on salvation, on fruits abiding. Man, it's a quiet class today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, my God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We ask that you will help us to bear fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. You will give us the guidance and the know-how to work on our salvation day in, day out in the mighty name of Jesus. And most importantly, the souls that you will save through us will abide in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.